The Seventh Tower by Garth Nix. Book Six, The Violet Keystone, Chapter 19. As soon as Tal left the Circle of Sunstones, the throne began to sink again, back down to the audience chamber. Ebbett, who had been lingering, had to jump out, assisted by his spirit shadow, who lifted him by his collar, much as it would carry a kitten. There was no sign of Sushin, or any visible trap. Even so, Mila gestured to Jared to go ahead of them, up the green stone stairs. He was not only tough enough to withstand a light trap, but was also a very experienced hunter, likely to detect any ambush. The stair led up to another level, and another chamber that was empty and bare. But the stair did not continue farther, and there were four large doors to choose for further exploration. All the doors were made of the golden metal, Tal noticed, and the walls were also lined with a close mesh of golden metal against the stone. No spirit shadows could pass through doors or walls here. Dark take it, swore Tal. They couldn't afford any delay by going the wrong way. That's all we need. Which one do we take? Just follow Sushin, said Ebbet. Elementary tracking, my boy. Tao looked at the stone beneath his feet and stamped in exasperation. As he'd expected, even stamping left no mark on this floor. There wouldn't be any tracks to follow. Or so he thought, until he saw Jarek at one of the doors. The wilder licked his finger and ran it along the joint between door and wall, before examining the result. Then he sniffed around the door handle, which was made of violet crystal and golden metal. He did this at all four doors, running between them, before pointing at the door on the eastern side. What? asked Tal. How can he tell? Dust, replied Mila, or the lack of it, and the hand leaves oil or sweat on metal. Come on! But he couldn't smell that, said Tal. Could he? Mila didn't answer. She ran toward the door and stood off to one side, the talon ready. Adris glided over to the other side, Adris next to her. Jarek tried the door handle. It didn't turn, even when the huge ice carl began to exert his full strength. The keystone, snapped Ebbet. Use your head, Tal. We can't wait around for you to get on with it. Tal flushed and raised the keystone, directing a beam of violet at the door handle. It was reflected back, and suddenly the handle turned under Jarek's hand, and he thrust it open. The wilder sprang through, drawing his chain as he ran. Mila followed him, the talon extending, followed by the spirit shadows and talon crow, with Ebbet and Malin behind. All of them expected some sort of trap, or enemy left behind by Sushin. But they didn't expect to see a gigantic insect, an awful, thin-bodied creature at least fifty stretches long, with hundreds of segmented legs, serrated mandibles longer than Jarek, and two huge, multifaceted eyes. Light flared in sunstones, the talon extended into a whip of light, and Jarek whirled his chain above his head. Then, everyone stopped. The light faded. Mila let her hand drop to her side, and Jarek's chain slowed its terrifying whirl and came to what would be a bruising stop on anyone's side but his own. The giant insect was dead. Or had never been alive. As they moved forward, Tal saw that it was actually a machine of some kind. It was made of something like the golden metal, though this material had a greenish sheen on the gold and the great multifaceted eyes were actually made up of hundreds of sunstones. Dead sunstones. It had a sort of saddle high on its back, behind the head with its terrifying mandibles, and the two closest legs had blunt bristles that could be used like rungs on a ladder, where all the other legs had razor-like protrusions. A war beast, said Mila in awe. This would be a terrible foe. It was thin enough to slip through anywhere a human could stand upright, but those mandibles could cut a warrior in two, and a leg slice a hundred foes into pieces. A worm walker, said Ebbet. Fascinating. I always thought they were made up. They? asked Crow. There are more of them? According to the stories, at least a score, said Ebbet happily. 
He produced a measuring tape from one of his ample pockets and stretched it between the worm walker's mandibles. Not now, great uncle, said Tal firmly, taking the old man by the elbow. We're in a hurry, remember? They walked quickly past the worm walker, careful to keep away from its sharp legs. The insect machine was actually positioned along a curving corridor, and as they rounded the bend, they saw another worm machine. Only this worm walker was posed differently. Its head and part of the body behind reared up, as if it were about to strike down an enemy. It appeared as dead and frozen as the first one, but everyone slowed down again except Jarek, and even he circled the head warily and kept his chain at the ready. I wonder how many sunstones you'd need for each one of these, Tal wondered as they passed. There was a third worm walker ahead, like the last, reared up in an aggressive attitude. Ebbett looked at something under his breastplate and answered absently. Seven hundred of at least strength eighty stones in each eye for full operation. They have not been used since the time of Ramelin and the Shadow Wars. His spirit shadow had to nudge him aside from the worm walker's legs as he spoke. It was finally clear that he was reading something, something he had stuffed down the front of his robe against his chest. It wasn't just a weird new habit he'd chosen to annoy Tal. Tal had a good idea what Ebbett had concealed there, though he couldn't work out how the old man was carrying it when it weighed as much as he did. Ebbett caught Tal's frown, looked down inside his robe again, and coughed. I was going to tell you, he said, but it slipped my mind. I thought it couldn't change its weight, complained Tal. It nearly dislocated my arm before. It can't do some alterations itself. You have to ask it the right way, said Ebbett. Fortunately, I have researched some of the phrases for commanding its obedience, though not all, by any means, and it is a tricky bit of... of whatever it is. Mila, Tal called out, for he and Ebbett had slipped a little way behind. Ebbett has the codex. Mila turned back to look, but Jarek continued on past her. As the wilder walked on toward the third worm walker, Tal saw a sudden glint appear in its eye and multiply like fire across a pool of oil.